Welcome back everyone to the next video and in this video we're going to talk about building websites with Gatsby and WordPress. So the first thing we need to understand why Gatsby with WordPress. In. Under what scenarios would you be using Gatsby with WordPress? So one of the things is that uh, a lot of times you have clients who are already familiar with content management uh, with WordPress. So many development teams, uh, content teams, etc. If they are familiar with WordPress, WordPress is a great choice. You go ahead and use that in, in the uh, back end and in front and you use Gatsby. And it's easy migration path for website teams looking for better security, site performance and development speed because it definitely gives you a better user, a better development experience. And like we discussed in the previous video that you know Gatsby provides you with a good performance because your pages are statically generated already available to you to load in almost instantly and they're secure as well. So putting Gatsby on top of WordPress is a way to deliver benefits without changing their content editing experience. We already discussed this part. Now, when is WordPress a good idea? Well, in case if you're redesigning your sites with the content already stored in WordPress, you're just migrating it, for example, and you want to build your front end with React, Gatsby is a good choice. Your content is ready. Uh, content teams who are comfortable with the WordPress content editing experience a project where security is important and development teams who value popular open source technology. Now this brings us to another question that is WordPress not so great. So one of the key things is that in case if you think that your content is going to change uh, dynamically uh, every now and then and you need to update your content and probably Gatsby is not a good choice at that time so for example complex access control workflows or content modeling restrictions themes requiring the use of WordPress uh, UI themes etc now let's learn about how to create Gatsby site with WordPress okay so the first thing we need to do is install the Gatsby CLI uh, so I have already installed Gatsby CLI but you can run this command into terminal which will install the Gatsby CLI for you once you do that, then with the help of the Gatsby CLI, we can actually create a new project. So we can just run Gatsby new and whatever the name of your project is going to be or the directory. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm just going to paste this command over here and just hit enter. So it's going to install all of the dependencies like set up webpack, Babel, install Gatsby. So it's going to take care of all of, uh, all of this for you. So it sets up a kind of a boilerplate for you to start working. Uh, so let's just wait for it to get installed okay so as you can see it's now installed it now I'm just going to go into that directory so Gatsby with WordPress workshop and now I'm just going to open that into my text editor let me just go ahead and do that and then if I had to just show you this structure of it so we've got some of the configuration files uh, node file SSR, all of that. Let's look at the package.json so you can see that uh, it's got the name, the description, the version, author. Uh, then it's got all of the dependencies installed like Gatsby, Gatsby image. This manifest is actually for PWA. This is also for PWA. Uh, then you have the React helmet that allows you to insert the uh, metadata into your header. And then you have your plugin sharp. This is for file system. Uh, so all of these then you have react react dom and all of this going on over here you also have breath here over here okay so and then we've got some of the commands so what I'm interested is in for develop for build we're going to use this but for uh, if I want to go ahead and just run the development server I can just do npm run develop or I can just do Gatsby develop uh, it's one of the same things so let me just go ahead and do that so I'm just going to hit that and it's going to start a development server for me at port uh, 8000 if it's free and if it's not already taken. So you can see that it is going ahead and uh, running different queries, generating image thumbnails and building your development bundle. Okay, so let's open it. Let's go over here, open it. And there you go. So you've got your uh, Gatsby site running. You also have the GraphQL server, uh, sorry, graphical running over here. So you can go over here. One of the cool things that I like about it that I can 
run my queries over here. So all of the queries are available. You can see so you have your site query, you have your site metadata, all of that. So for example, if you come over here and if you check the Gatsby config, you have the title, description, and author. So if you can run the site metadata. Uh, you can have author, you can have description, you can have, oh, let's just say I want title as well. So I'm just gonna hit that and run the query and you can see that I've got all of this going on over here. If I change all of this, then I'll get a different data. So let's just change it for now. So we can say Gatsby workshop and description will be my Gatsby site and then author you can write your name that matter okay awesome so if I change that then uh, we also if you go ahead and run the query you can see now you have the different data being shown because we changed that awesome now let me just explain to you some of these uh, files so for example we have the gatsby config.js that's the first file which contains all the configuration options for gatsby site with metadata etc so you can see that this is gatsby config.js and whenever you add a new plugin you just need to tell gatsby that you know this is it should use this plugin so you just need to add the uh, plugin name and then uh, just some of the other information about that plugin okay and then you have the gatsby node.js which is this one right here uh, so you can add your configure uh, api related uh, information over here so if you implement any node apis you can mention over here then you have gatsby browser.js okay so gatsby browser.js it allows you to customize and extend default settings affecting the browser using the gatsby browser api and then finally you have the Gatsby SSRJS, which is this one right now. Right now we haven't you know, added anything over here, but that can be used. Uh, Gatsby server-side rendering APIs to customize default settings affecting the server-side rendering. But in this, uh, as the scope of this particular tutorial, we're not gonna touch uh, this file, we won't touch this one, but we will deal with the Gatsby node.js when we are actually writing our queries and creating pages dynamically, okay? So let's come back to uh, the configuration file, which is basically your Gatsby uh, config.js. Now, in order for us to use WordPress with Gatsby, what we need to do is we need, we need two things. In order for you to access the content of WordPress uh, with GraphQL, you would actually need to write your schema, but so that you don't have to do it yourself, uh, there's a lovely plugin called WP GraphQL okay uh, which is created by Jason Paul and if you go ahead and uh, you install it on your WordPress site this basically goes ahead and uh, provides you with the GraphQL API for WordPress it makes the GraphQL server available on your WordPress site and then it just gives you one endpoint slash GraphQL and then where you can do all of your queries so I'm just going to go ahead and do that so you just have to go to your WordPress site just clone it and install it so as you can see that I've already installed it, WP GraphQL. I'm not going to show how to install it. You can do it yourself. It's pretty easy. Uh, then the next thing you need to do is install the Gatsby source GraphQL as well. Okay, so this basically, uh, you know, is for connecting the arbitrary GraphQL APIs to Gatsby GraphQL. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that onto my... So I'm going to stop my server and just do npm install Gatsby source GraphQL plugin and as you can see that it asks you to uh, put all of this information in your config so I'm going to go over here and just use this Okay, so you have to mention Gatsby source GraphQL just to tell Gatsby that you know this needs to be this plugin needs to be used. Then it asks you for the type name. It's an arbitrary name for remote schema type. 
Uh, you can name it whatever you want. So let's name it to WP Graph UL. And then this, this is the field. So once you add all of this information, then over here, WP Graph UL will be available. Whatever name you mention will be available here as a, uh, for you to query. So let's name it as WP Graph QL. Yeah, this is where you need to add your um, WordPress website details. So because the GraphQL can be queried uh, as slash GraphQL, all you have to do is just mention your website name, goitech.com slash blog. So my uh, WordPress is installed at slash blog. Uh, that's why I'm putting that. But you will just put in case if your WordPress website is at for example, codedict.com, you can just put that there, okay? And then over here, just put GraphQL, okay? Okay, and this line that you see over here, uh, this option enables progressive web app offline functionality. So you can uncomment it because probably we'll need that. That's all you have to do in the config file. Next thing we need to do is uh, just update the site metadata. We've already done that, so that's, you know, we can skip that part. And then just restart our server. So this plugin is already installed. Let's just restart the server. Gatsby develop. Okay, I think we just need to add a comma. We missed that here. And let's just run the development server. Okay, so development server is started now. And then if I just refresh on on this URL, you would notice that now we have this WP GraphQL. So that's what we had put over here in the field name. So we have this field name available for us to query. So if I want to do a query, I can just write my, let's say my query. And then I can say WP GraphQL, just this. And inside of this, what am I looking for? What I'm looking for posts. So you can see that here is post. So I, in fact, posts, because I need many posts. Post, and then inside of post, I have edges. So edges are basically the relationship between the nodes. And nodes are basically your data. And uh, inside of edges, I have node. So use node. And then I'm looking for title. So I get title. And let's say I want the excerpt so now if I run it you can see that now I've got all of the posts being listed over here so I have the title for my post I have the excerpt and that's all coming from my WordPress website that's awesome now the next thing we need to do is okay now the next thing we need to do is basically create the block pages programmatically. So we just need to add an export for creating pages in Gatsby Node.js, create some data, loop through it, then some use some templates to render the content of uh, the posts. And then those pages will be available at whatever the slug we, that we provide over there. Okay, Gatsby allows us to uh, create pages using the create page create page API. So if you take a look over here, you can see that we have the create pages API available over here. Uh, so if you go to this URL, I'll leave that in, into my uh, description or in the presentation. So all you have to do is just go to gatsbynode.js, do export create pages, and then it'll give you some uh, action available over here. And then inside of that, you can have some data and then you can loop through that data and then it will create pages dynamically. So there are two ways that we discussed to create pages. One is with the help uh, by just going ahead and creating the pages in the pages directory. So basically in source pages. So whatever pages you create over here, then the route will be available automatically um, on that. On that, for example, this will be available at slash uh, root. Now, similarly, you can create other pages. This will be available at slash page too. However, when you use the create page API, this is going to create the page dynamically. So this will be the path of that page. And then you can have any of the template that's going to render the content of that. And then you can also 
has context which will have the data available for you when you loop through it so this will be basically having this data and for the first time in the loop and second time it will have this data so this is how you use the create page API uh, however uh, in our case because we are using the, the rest API instead of putting this data statically we can just query it and then we can have the data being displayed all right so in the next video we're going to learn about how to use the create page API to create up our blog post pages dynamically okay so I hope you did like the video if you did please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already you can also follow me on Twitter uh, where I post the latest updates as well my twitter handle is imranit sayyad you can also follow me on github uh, over here it's the same URL handle okay and i will see you in the next video take care bye, -bye.